In this video, I want to show, I want to question a, a, an assumption so many of us have about our need for certainty in, in our lives. Because we feel like if we just had a little more certainty, things would go a little bit better. And what I'm going to show is that actually the only choice that we may have is to dive deep into uncertainty, unpredictability, into the unknown, because that's, we may not have a choice in this. And so let's start off with the external world. And so ever since Plato, and of course we see, saw this very explicitly with uh, Descartes, and then extremely you know, relatable with the Matrix movies, that there's really no way to know with any certainty if our external reality is true, real, or valid. For all we know, our brain could be in a jar, and this is all an elaborate trick being played upon it by some scientist. This literally could all just be a simulation. But Descartes played with this, and again, in the Matrix movies, they were able to show in a very interesting way that there's no way, if you're stuck in the Matrix, that you would ever be able to prove that you were in the Matrix. And there's really no way to get around this. So there's just no way to have any certitude about the reality of the external world. Maybe it isn't all, it is just a simulation. But that's okay for a lot of us because we say, well, that's a, I, I got the inner world that I can be certain about. I know, and I look within, and I know my feelings, and I know why I do things, and on all, all this. And but the problem with that is, is that ever since the '60s, the certainty of our inner world has been questioned. Also, so we've got the introspective gap, and uh, this is a whole series of uh, research. But what it shows is that when we look within to try to find out something simple, like why did I pick that object as my favorite? And, and I thought it was maybe the color, but the true reason is that it was on the right side and we just have a right preference for things. So there's a gap between looking within and the real reasons why we do things. And with emotional intelligence, they've been able to show, and this is a, another new idea, that we don't always know our own emotions. And so we go on vacation and, and we think we'll be happy if, if we're on vacation. And, and sometimes, um, you know, we're actually really happy on vacation, but at the time it doesn't seem like it. Or sometimes um, we're actually really happy with a car that we have, but at the time we end up just thinking, well, for these reasons, and then you end up selling it. And it's only after you sell it that you realize that you actually really liked it. And so it's really hard to know with any absolute certainty which emotion you, that you're actually having at the time. And even with relationships, you know, I was quote uh, John Hughes movies and he had it so perfectly with that one guy who was going to get married. And he always dealt with this kind of, you know, bland life. And could we be happy if, if, if we were cutting the grass and doing ordinary things? And he put it perfectly. He said, you'll always be happy. You just won't know it. And so that's an interesting way to put it, and, and, but it's very relatable. And people can look back and they say, well, you know, maybe looking back at college times, or, and I was so happy back then, but to be honest, I never really knew how happy I really was. But it actually goes a little deeper than just this, because in psychology, they've also shown that memories are a huge myth. Uh, we have this certain, when we look in and we, we kind of recollect on something that happened to us, we feel very certain that this or that happened, but they've been able to show absolutely that our memory is terrible and that the feeling is very certain, but it's not reliable. And uh, take something as simple as going to the doctor's office and you go for, maybe you're getting uh, glasses and you're, you know, you're, you're looking, you know, you're examining your inner world and you say, well, it looks, you know, everything looks nice and clear and, and uh, once I have my glasses on. And even that's totally wrong. You know, even the, sitting here looking at the screen in front of me, it looks like there's a nice oval, what we call the visual field. And it's very clear if you have your glasses on at the time. And if you take it off, it looks like everything's blurry. But the truth of this is, is that you only have a tiny little island of clarity called foveal vision. It's about the width of your thumb at arm's length. And so it's this tiny little island of clarity and it's jumping around the visual scene. And, it, and so when we look within, it feels like it's a nice, clear vi uh, visual scene, but it isn't. 
it's, a, it's this tiny little island of clarity that is jumping all over the place. And so our inner world is completely uncertain. And so, okay, what do we do? The external world is uncertain. The internal world is uncertain. So this drive or craving we have for certitude seems, it seems hopeless. And maybe it is, but maybe there is a way out by, maybe it's just the wrong path. And in fact, not only that, maybe this quest for certainty, maybe this certitude that we have, or this fund fundamental assumption that the external and the internal are actually accurate, maybe that is causing the stress in our lives. And it's not the unpredictability, it's actually the craving for certitude. And what I mean by this is, let's just take a real simple example. So someone steals your parking place, you know, you know, you think it's yours, so you're driving in and, you know, kind of like a, on Seinfeld kind of, if you saw that episode, and you know, so it feels like it's yours, and then someone comes in and steals it, and so you're really upset and angry. Okay, that's stress. Well, let's take that apart. If we take a look at the external world, you're not even sure that that parking space is real. You're, you know, if you embrace the uncertainty of it, then you question whether the parking place is even real. Okay, so that takes care of half of it. What about the inner half? Because you say, I'm angry, I'm upset. Are you sure? Are you absolutely certain that you're angry and upset? I mean, for all you know, know that maybe you just had too much coffee this morning. Um, or maybe something else that, that, you know, from the past. Again, we're cut off from this information. So we don't actually know why uh, we're experiencing the emotions that we're having at the moment. So for all you know, there is no parking lot out there and you're not actually upset at all. You just think you're upset. So instead of uh, this being bad news, that we are totally cut off from the external and we are totally cut off from the internal, instead of that being bad news, I think it's actually great news and maybe freeing news because if we dive deep into the unknown, the uncertain, it's almost like that, it's almost like clinging to the certainty, it's like clinging to that side, that like the cliff where you know, you're holding on for dear life and if you could just let go, you'd realize that you're not actually falling, that you're actually exactly where you should be. And maybe where we should be is a place of embracing and um, it, feeling a sense of like, like creativity and wonder by the absolute unpredictability, for the unknown and unpredictability and uncertainty that's both external to us and internal.